Welcome to Storytime. From the very, very first off-road overland trip that I ever took, this road, the road that I'm sitting next to now, was significant and it has remained significant. It's made out of a material called calcrete and it is blinding white. And so for that reason, I'm going to tell this story with my sunglasses on because I, re I really just cannot keep my eyes open. In 1972, I drove on this very road and the, the story and the legacy of this road is what this story time is all about. Botswana. Botswana was from day one a marvelous mysterious destination. I first came here in 1972. Uh, it was, but we'd spent some time, uh, we, I lived in England and then we spent five years in Africa and then we were going back to England and my dad said, well, you know, we should do an adventurous holiday. Let's go to, and he was very adventurous, let's go to the Okavango, which is in Botswana, and we'll drive there in our Triumph 2000 sedan. And we did. And we drove all the way to a town called Maun. Now Maun is in the middle of Botswana, the frontier to the great Okavango Delta. But to get there, you had to drive on 380 kilometers, if my memory serves me correctly, of Calcrete Road. This bright, blinding and incredibly rough service. And we did it in a Triumph 2000. And I remember we had a puncture in a place called, near a place called Nata, which was kind of halfway between Francistown. So the route was Francistown, Nata, Nata, Maun. And I remember sitting in the back of a Triumph 2000 on that road. I think my father shot some Super 8 footage, if I remember correctly, of the floods. There were actually, there was water crossing the road in places and we drove the Triumph through it. And amazingly, the vehicle survived. I remember we had a puncture and we had it repaired at, at Nata and we made it to Mount and got stuck and there were a whole lot of school children that I remember I have a vague memory of them not wanting to help push us out but I, I, it's, it's a vague memory and that was the first time I had encountered a Calcrete and B the Francistown Nata Nata Mount Road. The next time I did that road, Africa had affected us so deeply because of our trip to the Okavango that my dad bought a Range Rover and we bought it, put it on a mail ship, came out to South Africa and the first trip we did, uh, big pardon, second trip we did, the first trip was to Chobe, second trip we did was to back to Maun and back to the Okavango in the Range Rover and we drove this road and I, it was, it was, you know, hell in the back of that vehicle for pro probably a six hour drive, I guess, uh, on these, on this brutal surface. And my dad had a puncture and we were, we were near the town of Guetta. Guetta had basically a bottle store, no way of fishing, fixing a puncture. And we limped into Maun uh, with no spare wheel and we managed to get all the way there and uh, I it was one of the of that amazing amazing trip it was one of those most memorable parts of it was that brutal road I first drove the road myself in 1986 I did a similar trip now in my own Range Rover and guess what I had a puncture I would on average on a trip like on an expedition have two to three flats. So flats were something that you just dealt with and this type of surface is brutal on tires. It really was very hard on tires and hard on the mind as on the uh, driving for driver fatigue. Because of the white surface you could you can't actually see divots and, and chunks so you'll be driving along it and average speed is probably 80 kilometers an hour. You would just land in a hole without seeing you see it at the last second. And the trick I learned was to brake very, very heavily and just until the moment you hit the hole and then take your foot off the brake and have the front of the suspension actually literally just come up and, uh, and ease the, 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 the blow on the suspension. This is the main 
Francistown Mound Road. We're about 230 kilometers from Mound and the Makarikari pans are absolutely swamped. And at this point behind us, we've just crossed, they've actually crossed the road. I would bottom suspension constantly. And I remember I would arrive at Mound and I started carrying after my first drive. I then, from every drive after that, um, would carry a, a pop rivet fixer and, and a bag of rivets because the body panels of the Range Rover, the rivets would pop from the, from the shaking. I have witnessed 46 years of development in Botswana. Not only changes to its roads, but changes to its infrastructure, changes to its tourism industry. And those early days in the 70s, this part of Botswana was completely undeveloped. There were a few, few scattered lodges around. Um, I think in the Okavango itself there were three. There are probably 30 now. Um, in the Makarikari area, close to where I'm standing right now, there were none. There are three major lodges. Uh, Nata is a thriving tourist center. Good morning. In a town of Nata, doing our last little stock up before we head south for the Makarikari Pans, as is Gweta, with hotels and lodges and campgrounds and uh, even small airports. Well, Nata Airfield is, well, they're, they're not really airports, but they're just grass strips, but they're, they're, they see constant traffic from air and road. And I have even footage of lions on the side of the road, very, very close to where I'm standing now. I doubt if we would see that now, but it's not impossible. We saw elephants crossing yesterday. We've seen giraffe, zebra, wildebeest from the main road outside the national park, which, which to me is the, one of the magic parts about Botswana. Even now, with all of the development, still on a public road, you can see wild animals crossing. And if you want to get a tire repair or spend a night in a lodge, it's far, far easier. Botswana has grown up, and I've probably gone a little bit soft. Then the next time I did it was in 1990. And then I know that, the, that it was only the the, the Nata, the last part, the Nata Mound part that, that was rough, but it was in the worst condition I'd ever seen it. They had had a lot of rain and what happens with calcrete is that it, it, it creates puddles and the puddles dry and uh, then the wind blows and it just empties these holes. So it, is, it becomes full of huge holes. So your average speed cut is cut down from 80 down to about 60 and r brutal, punishing, just the vehicle being rattled to pieces. And that particular trip was uh, the recce. The, we, were, we, were, we had applied to run a lodge in the Okavango. And uh, we had met the owner in Johannesburg. And he said, well, why don't you come up to the camp and have a look-see inside? So I said, well, we'll drive up. And we drove up in my, this was in my 110, Land Rover 110 V8. When we got through, he, he was amazed to see us. The, the owner said, I, I didn't think you were going to get through. The stories are coming in from, because apparently during the one week, seven vehicles had rolled on that piece of road. And I think it was because they hit these, they just try and go too fast. They just go too fast. You hit one of these ho huge holes at 90, the vehicle is not going to stay on its wheels. I think that's probably what happened. But we, I just, I'm quite conservative when it comes to that, so I slowed down and, and we, we made it. And of course, the, the book, Torn Trousers, as a, as a, is the memoir of our year in the Okavango. From that recce trip, which was very successful, we then put our lives on hold for a, for a year and spent a year in the wondrous Okavango. The next time, I didn't drive it, I flew over it. This would have been in 1993. We had spent a year in the Okavango. We had returned to Johannesburg. Um, Gwen and I bought a, um, a Grob motor glider. Now, I'm going to do a separate story time about my aviation history. I've been asked to do it a number of times. And this was part of it. I bought a motor glider. And the story of our, our flight across, right across Botswana is a story all its own. But we actually flew over the road so I could actually get 
that, uh, that perspective and I could see the old road sitting next to the new road, which is of course exactly as it is now. This road that I'm, that I'm sitting on is the old, the original old road and this part of it is used to uh, gain access to the Makarikari Pans National Park, one of the gates. But next to it, less than half a kilometre, uh, that side of me, is the, uh, is the new tar road. And the last part of the tar road, as far as I remember, I, I was probably tarred in about 1996, because that was the last time I saw it um, in its, in its um, calcrete state. They then, they then tarred it all the way to Mound, and of course everybody in Mound rejoiced because they didn't have to endure the hours of um, torture. Uh, by driving. Also, um, the trucks wouldn't fall to bits on the way. It really was a, a, a test of endurance, this particular road. I have subsequently lost count on how many times I have driven this road, but I, I have to conclude with this. The road's not notoriety was nationwide. Again, a separate story time that I will be presenting will tell us about a trip I did in 1988, Gwyn and I in my Range Rover, where we had an accident. I'm coming around a blind bend, and unfortunately someone in the Land Rover was also coming around a blind bend, and we connected. We had a crash. We had a semi-head-on collision with a Toyota Land Cruiser. And that, again, is a, is a whole story on its own. But four, right at the end of that, and, I'm, and this is a bit of a spoiler, but the crashed Range Rover, which was a mess, it actually had no front end at all, no bonnet, no nothing, just an engine, chassis rails, steering. And I drove it all the way from the crash site, which was in far northern Botswana, all the way home. And at the border post, leaving Botswana, I arrived with this mess of a vehicle. Amazingly, they let us through, no, 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 no issues. But the, the inspector was inspecting the back of the vehicle and he said, he looked at this and said, oh, what's this now? I said, it's the roads. It's the roads here. It just fell apart. And he went, Ugh. No, maybe it was a Mnata Mount Road? Serious. He said this to me. <laughs> I said, no. I said to him, no. No, we had a crash. We had an accident. And he said, oh, okay. Not kidding. He knew how bad the road was. And that's how much respect he had for, for, for Range Rovers because he'd probably seen them fall apart in the past. And he said to me that he thought it might be the Nata Mount Road. This road then has this indelible mark on my memory. And I'm very grateful now because I am now on my way to Maun. I have lost count on how many times I've driven to Maun. And I'm going to be doing it on a nice, firm, sealed road. Thank you for listening. <laughs>